If you can read those words and hear my voice, I want to thank you for clicking on this video. You could go anywhere for foodie beauty content. You chose to come here. A lot of people have asked me to go back to the old intro. One person in particular, whose opinion I value very much, told me I needed to. And speaking of going back to their old ways, I just did a video where I said, hey, you know, foodie is coming on, eating on camera, going down the same path. What's one of the best ways to get views on YouTube? It's drama. So today, she encourages this. She changes the title of the most recent video to Eating Noodles because I only made $600 this month. She then goes on what we'll refer to as a rage, where she says people are miserable, she needs help from YouTube, all the things that we would normally expect, with the exception of a little bit of confusion. Because <laughs> she says, why would I spend my Canadian money here when their money is worth 4.4 times that. Well, Foodie, if you're going to exchange your money, you're going to get the exchange rate. So that, I don't think, makes total sense if you're going to be living there. So she doubles down on this, I've been saving a lot, keep lying. And what's interesting is this entire post, she never once says who she's speaking about. But rather than do that, she does use a thumbnail that says Kuwait struggle shopping. And of course, even when people ask, who were you speaking to? She says reaction channels, cough, miserable, what she calls every single one of us. And it's FFG. And I've never spoke about FFG on my channel. I never really intended to. But the reality is, if you look holistically, one thing that we all have in common is Foodie has came after every single one of us, right? Foodie did an epic rage in her car, pulled over to the side of the road, cars flying by, screaming at me. She does this to a lot of creators as a response to what she perceives they're doing to her. Now, there is one categoric difference between what I do and what most creators do, and I'm not slighting any creator. But what I will say is things that I've tried to stay away from, and I did just re-upload some of my original videos where I did use the video because it was in a kind of an educational, formal documentary perspective. I really try hard to not show her videos because I feel that as a creator, I should be able to narrate to you and describe to you what's taking place. I should be able to provide you an opinion that you're either free to agree or disagree with without actually seeing what took place. So I do, in part, understand Foodie's frustration of these people are taking the videos that I made and then using them. But the challenge with that is in just about every creator's realm, they are making some type of adjustment to it, whether they're speeding it up, which is probably the least creative, whether they're adding commentary, whether they're adding different clips together to show how we've changed from one video to the next or one year to the next or maybe one fiance to the next. So to me, I think everyone has their own way of addressing things. Mine has always kind of been to provide a short video with direct commentary versus going any other route. And maybe perhaps that's why I've been called out so many times. I think maybe FFG has been called out so many times because they've had a lot of back and forth. She obviously, I'm aware, went to the fashion show where Foodie seemed like she was fine with it until she wasn't fine with it. I guess there's really no way for any of us to handle this constructively, right? It's going to be this back and forth all the time. But I think to that point... Foodie has to appreciate that you have people in this community that help make her relevant by discussing her content, that generate interest for her channel and her specific videos, whether they're speaking about what happened as an opinion or they're showing what happened in a video. If I define something to you and you want to go watch it to get your own opinion, you're probably going to go watch Foodie's video to do that. If you disagree with something FFG says, you very well may go 
to Foodie's channel to sit there and watch what actually took place. I understand that there's a short-sightedness to every content creator just takes views away from her, right? No one watches Foodie because there's a me or there's an FFG or there's a Senorita Yum Yum, right? But I really don't think that's the case. And I think more than anything, Foodie would have a really hard time knowing that's the case. And the reality is, and I've said this to nauseam, and I mean this, Chantal, I was gone for two months. Your views didn't change, right? So you have to reflect on yourself as a creator and say, what am I doing different? What can I do different? And is anything I'm doing impacting this? You can't project outward that everyone else is the reason that your views are down. Because they're not. Your views are down because your content has not been quality. It's felt rushed. It's felt forced. And it's extremely, extremely beginner level for what you have the capacity to do. Said it before, I'll say it again. You're a full-time content creator. You have the luxury of doing nothing but creating content on YouTube. It is inexcusable for you to not respect your audience enough to sit down and learn proper editing, to learn proper ways of laying out scenes, to find creative ways to use camera angles, to show what you're talking about, to educate your viewer with where you're going, to educate yourself with what you're doing. All of that creates content that is worth watching. All of that would prevent me from taking your 13, 17, 20 minute vlog and smashing it down into 90 seconds. So rather than look at that and assume that someone is being cruel to you, look at that and say, how can I prevent him from doing that? And once you've accomplished that, then you'll actually see your numbers improve. Then you won't have to be concerned with how much money you've made or how much someone else is saying you made because that information, whether we like it or not, is available publicly. And you can say that it's not true. It is true. At the end of the day, one thing is certain. There's numbers that have a degree of accuracy and we don't know how much is made on memberships. But I've often said as well, those memberships that you're selling on your channel are not providing a lot of content in return other than allowing people to come sit and chat with you. But I do know, as I said in the beginning, if you were going to sit here and go back to the incessant eating on camera, if you're going to go back to the raging on camera, if you're going to go back to blaming other creators, shading other creators, posting these rages on your community post, then we know one thing. If you start to see an uptake in those views, then you are going to continue to take that route. It's the easy route. It's the lazy route. Drumming up faux controversy is the easy route to get attention. And if that's what you're going to do, you're going to have to up the ante every single time. And as far as I'm concerned, having went back and watched your channel the last number of years, I don't know that there's a whole lot more of up the ante you can do. Love to know your guys' thoughts on this. Appreciate you watching. I will be back as soon as I can with more content.